Good morning students and once more welcome you all to my den where we will talk literature. And today we have before us a special guest, a squirrel. Yes friends, today we are going to talk about the short honeycomb poem The Squirrel by Mildred Bowers Armstrong. Before everything, there was the beginning and as the beginning began, the rest followed naturally. So let's start with a cursory glance at the beginning, the biography of our poet of the hour, Mildred Bowers Armstrong. Mildred Bowers Armstrong was born in 1901 and she died in 1984. Her first volume of poetry is Twist to Smoke, O stands for Smoke. For this collection, she was awarded Yale Younger Poets Prize in 1928. Now, before we move further, let us just discuss the themes of this poem. The first theme is the wonder that is nature. It also talks about nature observer. And finally, and most importantly, it gives a short, crisp description of a squirrel. Apart from the basic themes, it also has some objectives, which are to sensitize the readers to nature and its elements around them and also to develop the aesthetic sensibilities and the art of appreciation. Now before we go further read the poem and the remaining things, why don't we take a glance at the hero, the squirrel. Yeah, there he is, nibbling at a nut. So now the poem. He wore a question mark for tail, an overcoat of grey. He sat up straight to eat a nut, he liked to tease and play. And if we ran around his tree, he went the other way. Before we move further, let us just think about why should we read this particular poem. Now, see, as the world goes under lockdown due to this coronavirus threat, Another image is gradually unveiled before us, like clear blue sky, absence of smoke, birds on trees, hidden gems on Netflix and Prime videos. Well, as we continue our daily affairs to achieve something great in life, we forget to look at these smallest things. In the high and mighty pursuit of life, we become oblivious of these tiny pockets of joy and wonder in the lap of nature. This poem just reminds us that beauty, wonder, sometimes are found where we are not looking. Sometimes it can even be found in a nutshell or someone biting on a nutshell, a squirrel maybe. That's why we should all read this simple poem without worrying about meaning and symbol because See, life is best enjoyed as it comes, without worrying about all the complications. Now the points that we should discuss. First of all, let us talk about the summary. A very simple poem where the poet talks about a squirrel. The squirrel has a curly tail that looks like a question mark. He is covered in grey fur. He is sitting straight to sample a nut. The squirrel is innocently naughty as he teases and plays all the live long day. He is happy and playful and at the same time shy of human beings and runs away whenever one tries to come near him. Apart from summary, we should also learn about the tone and setting. The poet assumes a descriptive tone which is full of wonder. She looks at the squirrel with the imaginative eyes of a child. This imagination is evident in her depiction of the tail as a question mark and the fur as an overcoat. See, the fur is not actually an overcoat, but the child assumes it the way it covers up the squirrel. It looks like an overcoat and that is why she says that the squirrel wore an overcoat of grey. Anyway, the poem is set in a garden 
the squirrel is sitting on some tree tasting nuts. The poet perhaps observes it from her window or maybe she herself is in the garden playing. There are also some elements at play here. For example, the squirrel himself and the poet herself. And apart from these two, there is also a bright sunny day and some nuts. Now let us go into the poem line by line. He wore a question mark for tail. Yes, the tail indeed looks like a question mark. Anyway, the poet was perhaps looking out of her window on a bright sunny morning when she noticed a tiny cute squirrel sitting on the ground or perhaps on a branch sniffing around suspiciously, surreptitiously some nuts. The child in the poet can easily identify the dreadful question mark. You see, all the teachers, they love to put big question marks either in the question paper or on the answer strips. But here in this garden, it has lost all its classroom red gravity as it hangs from the body of the squirrel in the form of its tail. And look, an overcoat of prey. Remember the rabbit with a pocket watch that led Alice to the rabbit hole? Yes, this squirrel though hasn't got a pocket watch but nevertheless dons, that is wears, a grey overcoat. We are talking about some rich little squirrel on a windy day perhaps. He sat up straight to eat a nut. Can we just take a moment to admire all these squirrels? sitting there, busy with their work, attentive, and this one particular, who sits up straight to eat a nut. Look at his manners, his perfect etiquettes. How many of us do sit straight when doing something? I remember my parents always calling me for bending over my books, plates, video games, and now on my keyboard. But this gentleman, <clears throat> I mean, gentle squirrel here, sits up straight as he finishes his inspection of the nuts and takes a bite of it. He liked to tease and play. But before we move on further, let us just stop because you see we have covered already three lines and just three more lines are left. So it is a good point to stop and think what is happening. It is evident that the poem is easily divided in two parts, marked by two full stops at every third line. The first three lines deal with the outward description of the squirrel. With the poet, we also see him sitting out there in the garden with his curly tail and grey fur, tasting a nut. And now we come to the next part. He liked to tease and play and see the squirrels, they are at play here. The one thing that we now look, we can consider now is why is the poet consistently maintaining the past tense? Let's not talk about tense consistency, a tech term that basically tells us to maintain the tense structure throughout a text. It seems like the poet saw the squirrel sometime back, but it has run away now. Maybe she approached it and the squirrel got scared and ran away. Anyway, she pins some thoughts on it while the memory is still fresh. Now, at this particular point, the squirrel appears like a visiting neighbor. He is naughty. He is such a tease. He is, in fact, like a little child frolicking throughout the live long day. He has all the seasons in the sun. And if we ran around his tree, he went the other way. Look how the squirrel is peeping at you from behind a tree trunk. A naughty squirrel indeed. What is he playing? Hide and seek. Apparently, whenever the kids I mean the human kids ran around his tree to get a good glimpse or to play with him perhaps or to pet him. This media shy squirrel took off immediately. Now let us think about the ending of this poem. You see, now 
Everything explains the past tense. The poet had indeed tried to get close and the squirrel ran away. No wonder the poem is so short. After all, how much can you conjure from your memory? Just as the first half presents a static image of the squirrel sitting there tasting a nut, the last half adds movement to the image. The squirrel is naughty, playful, and it never comes within the reach of the observers. Whenever one tries to get close, he just runs away. Finally, we come to the form and figures. The first thing that we will discuss here is the syllable count. The verse lines are arranged in 8-6 syllable combination where the first, third and fifth line each has 8 syllables. That is the first, third and fifth line all having 8 syllables while the second, fourth and sixth line each has 6 syllables. Syllables are the number of vowel sounds in a word. Let us take a close look. He, Wor, A, Huesh, Shin, Mark, For, Tail. See, eight syllables. And then, An, O, Wor, Coat, Of, Gray. Six syllables. And this pattern is repeated throughout the poem. The next figure that we will discuss is alliteration. It is the repetition of similar consonant sounds in close succession like sat up straight, ran around, the other, etc. The other figure that we will discuss here is anaphora. Anaphora is also a kind of repetition, but in this case, same word or phrase is repeated at the beginning of each sentence. Like, if you look at the third and fourth lines, you will find that he, the pronoun he is repeated at the beginning of both these lines. Finally, what's up with the title? The title is simple and straightforward, just like the poem. The poet vividly describes a squirrel as she sees in her garden perhaps. Therefore, the title, the squirrel, is apt for this short descriptive poem. Thank you. More when we will meet again.